Rick Girdler, and I'm from Somerset, Kentucky. I'm just a country boy uh, that's uh, brought up among a community, a small community called Possum Trot, or it's actually called Pleasant Hill, but that's where the Baptist Church was at. And uh, that was a slower time, and people would go sit on porches and talk to people, and, and they would raise the kids. You know, if I got out there and done something wrong, that my mom would be the first one to hear about it. And, uh, and I didn't want my mom to hear about my trouble. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, the, but the government thing is less government is better government for me. I'm replacing a relative, my nephew, Chris. Chris is a very articulate, very good young man. Uh, when you're young, you've got kids, and kids become the major focus. And, and I don't blame him for doing that. And I'm a 61-year-old man, and uh, my kids are grown. My wife did a great job raising her kids, and now I've got five of the sweetest grandkids in the world. And also, uh, go one step further, of course, Donnie worked for Harold Rogers, uh, Eddie Girdler is my first cousin, which is the mayor of Somerset. So uh, Rand Paul and all them are amazed. There's so many girdlers, and when they come to visit, you know, that all the girdlers are in Somerset. I've always been kind of intrigued about public service. And in my job, I've been an insurance agent for 39 years on my own agency. And a lot of the things we've done there has been to help people even get them to the right place as far as an advocate for uh, even in governmental uh, help. And I had a cousin that was a uh, field rep for uh, Harold Rogers, his name was Donnie Girdler. And uh, people would call me and I could hook them up with Donnie. And I got kind of thinking, man, that's, you know, people's needing help out there. And it's people that was my mom and dad's age at that time. So just more or less an advocate for them. The, the biggest reason I, I ran, I ran on the idea that we got to get back to uh, conservative issues as far as uh, whether they're uh, physical or even uh, social issues. You know, I, I'm one of those that's very pro-life. I was born and raised in a, a, a small community and within uh, the shadow of a Baptist church. And a lot of my values, I, I, you know, that truly come from that and my bringing, uh, bringing up of, uh, on a Christian family. And, uh, and really, back in those days, the community raised the kids, and I'm part of that product. And I would love to see us be able to get back to that. I really would. I'm Steve Meredith. I'm from Litchfield, Kentucky. Well, I was a hospital CEO in Grayson County for 30 years and retired four years ago. And let me tell you, I have thoroughly enjoyed retirement. I highly recommend it for anyone, but it's, it came with a little bit of um, the burden of, of guilt. Uh, my wife and I both uh, come from very, very humble beginnings, but we have been blessed more than two people deserve to be, truly have. And we both believe that scripture that much is given to you, much expect in return. It really was a her prompting. She said, you need to do this. And uh, I always like to do things with a sense of accomplishment. And certainly when you look at the challenges facing Kentucky, if we're successful, there will be that sense of accomplishment. You know, the second reason I love Kentucky and the people here, you know, we're a poor state, but such a great state. Anytime we have a neighbor that, that goes down or, or has a problem, we rise to the occasion and we'll give them our last dollar if we need to. And I just think the people of Kentucky deserve more than what we've got in the past few years, particularly working families, because they struggle so much. You know, the 2008 uh, economy, the downturn in the economy was, was devastating to a lot of people. And I don't think that the state has really recovered from it. And the people most affected by it have been working people. So I just want to do my best to improve the quality of life for, for working people in Kentucky. There's a lot of things I have an interest in, but certainly with what's happened in healthcare in Kentucky over the last uh, four or five years is of great concern to me, particularly uh, rural hospitals in the rural health care delivery system. I don't think people understand how precarious it is from a financial standpoint right now. Uh, people have, I think, decided that maybe Obamacare has resolved a lot of issues because they're getting paid for patients that uh, they used to not get paid for, but that was just like a one-time bump. And now, because of additional regulations, particularly with regard to the electronic medical record and uh, other regulations, that 
rural hospitals in particular are really struggling, and if we don't do something very short term, I'm concerned we're going to see a lot of rural hospitals close, and that's devastating to rural communities. You know, uh, it'd be like uh, Louisville losing UPS if a rural community loses a hospital, and we need to be aware of that. As a hospital and CEO, I was here quite often uh, during legislative sessions, and we considered it a win if nothing happened. Um, and I have to tell you, I was not duly impressed with uh, our legislature, but I tell you, I was 110% uh, wrong about that. Anyone who comes here uh, does so at great sacrifice, and if you're not committed to doing uh, what's right for the state, I'm not sure you're here very long. So yes, I think the state of Kentucky is in great hands, and there's a level of excitement now that uh, I think has been uh, absent from the state for a long time. And you know, people fear change, but they know we need change and uh, change is going to be a standard operating procedure, I think, for this state for several years to come. I've lived the American dream, I truly have, and I see that disappearing. And one of the biggest challenges is our school system. My wife uh, was a second grade teacher for 31 years, just retired this last July. So the four years I was retired, I got to sit home and watch her. And um, I'm a little bit embarrassed about it, but I have to say I was amazed. She's had a tremendous work ethic, but she would get up at 4.30 in the morning, be at school by 6 o'clock, come home around 5 o'clock, do two hours of paperwork, and then that's, her day's done and she's exhausted. And so much of her paperwork has nothing really to do with uh, the quality of education in Kentucky. Uh, I think that's the next big crisis for Kentucky. If we don't do something to relieve the burden for teachers, I think we're going to have a tremendous teacher shortage in the future. Then what will we do? During the campaign, had a great number of wonderful experiences, but very early on, uh, one of the best experiences I had was from a uh, young teenage girl from uh, Breckenridge County in my district, and she wanted to know about my campaign. I thought, well, that's unique in itself, because I can tell you on one hand how many people have asked me, what's your platform? And she wanted to know, what's the four or five major platforms of, uh, of your campaign? So I gave it to her. It's uh, you know, education, funding for health care, uh, economic development, job creation, those sort of things. And she said, well, thank you very much. Very respectful young lady. She said, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you one more question. I said, certainly. She said, tell me what single piece of scripture best describes your campaign. And I'm going, wow. Isn't that a question that we should ask every political candidate? So I gave her, I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And that's what I want to do for the people of Kentucky. Don't want to harm anybody. I know we got a lot of challenges out there, but I want to help everyone. I want to give us a hope in the future.